everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. Happy first day of spring of 2024. So we are into the sun is shining and um, I hope it's warming up wherever you are in the world. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I finish uh, filling up this page of my sketchbook art journal. On the bottom right side of my uh, page here, I'm going to sketch these two large chocolate bars uh, that I got from my neighbor who just came back from her Europe trip on a cruise. Uh, yeah, if you're from Italy or you have been to Italy, you probably can recall uh, these chocolates. Very nice package and Italian words on here. So this one is a banana flavored chocolate. And this one I think is the uh, uh, latte flavored chocolate. Let's do it. So I'm going to start with the two large contour outlines of the, uh, of the chocolate bars package. So see two large shapes of the packages. And these large shapes are rectangles observed from an angle. And um, they are in trapezoid shapes, not perfect rectangles anymore. So just getting these two shapes in. The one here on the bottom has razor cuts on the top and bottom of the package there. And now moving on to the inner details and establish a sense of three-dimensionality, starting with these typical folds on the top and bottom of this uh, latte flavored chocolate. And I just drew this uh, long and loose line, establishing the thickness of the chocolate bar in the package. Okay, and then same for this one. Uh, the folds, the little wrinkles on the top and bottom using loose and gentle lines, sense of thickness on the bottom. Now it's time to have fun uh, getting these letters and graphics in. Yeah, this one is this uh, bonta latte. I think it means good latte in Italian. And then these little pieces of chocolates uh, stacking on top of each other. Division line between the top and bottom half of the package and these Italian words, the logo, using little squiggles for some tiny words that's pretty hard to see. The logo for the other chocolate and the letters, it says O. So, Choco. Yeah, very playful. Accentuate on the um, on the bottoms of these two packages, and then two small cubes of chocolate splashing into milk. Uh, this is actually white chocolate without any uh, banana flavors in it. The yellow package it really reminds me of a banana flavored uh, white chocolate in Asia. And then letterings using loose little squiggles. Yeah, Italian words are really fun to read. A lot of them ends with letter O. Final accentuations here and there, and here's the look of my finished line work. Time to paint watercolors. Here are my two Holbein water brushes and a towel, and my beloved Mongjiu watercolor palette. And I'm going to start by quickly wetting the areas with clear water, so it's easy to get the colors spread out smoothly without um, brush marks. Grabbing yellow ochre mixed with uh, lemon yellow, a pretty high ratio of lemon yellow for this uh, white chocolate package. Making sure my yellow is clean before uh, getting grabbing this color. Yellow is a color that easily gets contaminated, so make sure I got a pure, clean yellow here for the package. So if the top of your yellow paint is dirty with the other colors, make sure you wash it with a brush tip and then clean your brush before starting to use it. And now, starting to paint the first layer of the uh, latte flavored chocolate here using very much pure burnt sienna, leaving a perfect paper white edge over there for the three dimensionality of the uh, flat rectangular prism shape. Yeah, and the bottom edge over here is brown as well, skipping around, leaving some white spots for the highlights of plastic. Clean my brush and then grab some uh, cerulean blue mixed with a bit of cobalt blue for the uh, bottom part of the uh, package here. Again, leaving the edge there for the shine of the, of the plastic. Some leftover brown to paint those chunks of chocolate on the, in the middle of the package. 
So that's the first layer of、uh, both of these two chocolate packages. Now it's time to start shading a little bit. So I just grab a little bit leftover、uh, purplish blue, and paint over the thickness area of this yellow package, same as those、uh, wrinkled areas. Yeah, so this is very much、uh, royal purple mixed with cobalt blue,、uh, diluted with quite a little bit of water.、Uh, so it's a transparent wash over the yellow. The yellow is still somewhat shining through the shade color. I also painted a little light shadow of the latte chocolate landing on the white chocolate package. Now it's time to shade this one here, a mix、uh, royal purple into burnt sienna for a darker brown. Playing with value transition, so this is not a、uh, a very stiff and solid layer of、uh, darker brown. There's a slight bit of value transition, playing with water control in every brush mark, and shade the surface a little bit as well with the diluted version, super diluted version of brown. And now it's time to shade the blue area. For the blue, I like to mix in a little bit royal purple to shade it. Again, playing with value transition, a diluted version here for the top, and adding some retouches of more saturated cerulean blue because I really want this package to look a little stronger with、uh, saturated blue here on the bottom, and then intensify the shadow of the latte chocolate on the yellow package. Yeah, some leftover、uh, brown to shade the white chocolate. Graphics here and there. Now it's time to paint the shadow. First, a, a reflective color of yellow. Let it dry off a little bit. So after the yellow shine is almost dried on the shadow area. Oh, I'm gonna sip my tea. Stay hydrated. I just grab some leftover blue purplish gray, diluted version, and a more concentrated version around the very bottom edge of the white chocolate package right here. The contrast of a shadow, and here is a look of my finished sketches of the chocolates.、Uh, one little last space on the upper right corner. I'm gonna sketch the beautiful cherry blossoms, almost in full bloom, right outside the window in front of me. So powerful contrast with the blue sky as a backdrop and the pink purple cherry blossoms in the foreground. And getting ready to enjoy the moment of pure joy, seeing lines unfolding on paper. So just getting these branches and twigs done for the cherry tree, and not drawing the blossoms at all. I'm just gonna use brush marks to depict the look of the blossoms in cluster in between these branches and twigs. So just getting these swiping lines for these small and very feathery、uh, twigs done. Capturing the life of the of the tree in the spring, working from real life observations,、uh, it just has so many more possibilities compared to working with a static photo. You're able to compose in any way you would like. Very very open ended.、Um, just just starting after the、um, the drawing of the branches and twigs. Now I'm drawing these、uh, simple large shapes of the house behind. I see a lot of、uh, triangles and trapezoids and squares. And working from real life, your drawing and painting is going to turn out to be pretty different from a photograph. Much more lively, animated, and whimsical. And just、uh, drawing these windows, filling in these medium large shapes of the sections of the house. Some window panels might be shaded. And the、uh, the front porch area of the house. This neighbor must be really lucky because I've been drawing、uh, their house. So many times, numerous times over the past ten years since I lived here, and I'm gonna keep the drawing of this one and a half houses pretty simple without adding too many、uh, details, just the large chunks of sections and the windows, and that's very much it. I don't want too much details to come forward and compete with the cherry blossoms, accentuate on some、uh, shadow areas. There's another house behind, and some trees in the far distance, looking way smaller. Some final little bits of twigs, here and there. And that's it of the line drawing. Now it's time to paint watercolors again. So I'm gonna use an easy and relaxing approach 
painting the cherry blossom clusters, starting with a diluted red. If you dilute red with a lot of water, you're gonna get a really nice uh, soothing pink. That's the first layer. And then using medium to light hand pressure, using my large tip Hobain water brush. There are numerous flowers on the branches. The key uh, to, uh, to relax is just to summarize those clusters of flowers. Just pay attention to the general rhythm of how those uh, flowers and petals are laid out on the branches and just get them in. Um, you don't have to be photorealistic or anything. Just get the, uh, the spirit of these flowers dancing lightly in the spring sunshine. Um, now I'm um, putting on a little bit diluted um, cerulean blue to start with the first layer for the sky. And then certain part of the sky has a slightly heavier tone of blue, usually the middle to the top part of the sky and also in between uh, some of the clusters. I'm punching in some little dots of cerulean blue. Yeah, so the contrast between the pink and the blue is very important. So I want the contrast to be sharp and visible, making sure that I have some blue dots of sky, the negative spaces in between the flower clusters. Okay, so I'm gonna take a break from the sky and the flowers. Now, putting on kind of like an underpainting for the exteriors of these houses using diluted yellow ochre, the sun was uh, hitting directly onto these houses and then uh, diluted uh, sepia for the rooftop there being loose because there's some flowers in front of the roofs. Uh, some burnt sienna for this uh, section of the house, the garage area. And the strong dark sepia of the uh, branches and twigs are standing out really well in between the flower clusters. So just getting this in. Burnt sienna to start with. Uh, medium to thin brush marks. Now starting to add more contrast for the flowers. This is the same color, uh, red or magenta, diluted um, with a little less water. So it's a more concentrated version of red pink. Switching to my medium tip water brush now to get these uh, precise little dots in. Yeah, and just be quick and just keep the flower clusters pretty simple and not overworked. And I think that's it. Not wanting to make it looking way too heavy. Now the trees, I need some cold colors in my picture. So uh, Viridian Green with yellow ochre, uh, using some leftover bluish gray to uh, paint the shadows in between the sections of the house. Really beautiful shadows using thin brush marks. So as you can see, painting in these little shadows on the house is really further suggests that it's a bright sunny day with light and shadows. Uh, final polish here and there. Yeah, another layer of darker brown for the branches and twigs so the tree looks stronger. A little bit more final renderings here and there. And that's it. That's a 25 minute uh, drawing and watercolor sketch. Now it's time to write down the time. It's so important for me to keep track of the time and the day and the date of my uh, sketches. So there's a strong chronological quality with these pages that can, I can easily recall memories many months and years later. So art journaling or sketching in sketchbooks on a daily basis is more than just creating beautiful artworks for me. It's more of creating visual memories of my life. All right, so here is a look of my finished sketchbook page. So it took me about an hour just relaxing in the kitchen in the afternoon on the first day of spring, 2024. Again, happy spring, everyone. I'm very grateful for the longer days coming up and uh, more time for me to sketch during the day and to be out there finding new inspirations. So, so there'll be a lot more urban sketches and nature sketches coming up in the next number of months in, uh, in spring and summer. So stay tuned. If you like this video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for so many more upcoming exciting videos. And I will see you again very soon next time um, of a cafe mixed with urban sketches. 
And uh, yeah, take care everyone. See you soon. Bye.